And Mona, let's start with you on this. We are looking at some pretty nervous investors. They managed to pull things back from the depths um, instead of kind of pushing things deeper. Do you anticipate that we will continue on this upward path, or do you think we're going to be back to where we were a week or so ago, uh, just based on what we hear from earnings? Yeah, thanks, Becky. You know, look, I think generally it's been a positive sign to see some of the stability in markets. Uh, we're making up some of that technical damage that we really did last week. In fact, we're holding on to the lows uh, that we saw last Monday, and we are well above those at this level. So we're hopeful that that correction perhaps is behind us. Uh, as we move forward for the next few months, however, we do think we will be hit with bouts of volatility as the Fed uh, prepares to take on this you know, inflation fight that it's told us, told us it's going to do. They will probably be a live meeting starting March, maybe for the next four meetings or so. Uh, but keep in mind what we've really seen is more of a valuation derating story. And we've certainly seen that play out over the last few weeks as well. Uh, we've seen higher parts of, you know, more speculative parts of tech, higher valuation parts of, of tech and growth generally uh, sell off much more than the broader market. Uh, but keep in mind, earnings, uh, interestingly, have held up nicely to your point. 20% earnings growth for Q4. And we're still looking at 9% earnings year for 2022. So to the, us, this is a valuation derating story more than a fundamental uh, degradation, which is a, an important difference for investors. Yeah, an important difference because in, in some frame, no matter what numbers they put up, it may not be good enough. Yeah, exactly. You know, markets have not been kind to those that have missed, but certainly haven't been that kind to even uh, those that have beat nicely, as we've seen in the last week or so. Uh, but we think as we specifically or more, more generally get to the back half of this year, uh, we think some of that, um, you know, some of the angst could be behind us as not only the Fed may go on a more gradual pace, uh, but also we may see some of those supply chain issues ease. We may see inflation come down. And if we get, you know, some of that pent up demand that we're seeing in the economy come back, uh, we really could see a consumption led recovery, specifically as we head towards um, the summer months and towards the back half of the year. So in that environment, we certainly see areas of opportunity, value cyclical sectors, parts of the growth market that are mo more robust, cash flow positive, uh, and even international and EM, we, we think, have that exposure to the value markets and could do well. So there are certainly areas to uh, think about that could be relative outperformers, even in a volatile market. Mona, does that sound like you're staying away from technology, though, just because of the re-rating? Like, you think if there's a consumer-led demand picture, that's one thing, but that's not going to be for stocks like tech stocks, right? Yeah, you know, we, we still remain pretty cautious on those more speculative higher valuation. We think we could see bouts of volatility still as the Fed starts its cycle, um, you know, starts doing balance sheet reduction as well. Uh, we, we would probably um, pick your opportunities in tech that include um, some of the themes we're seeing, enterprise spending in both hardware and software, mobile payments, you know, globally as consumption picks up, and then, you know, parts of even semis, which could benefit from supply chain easing. All of those themes, we think, have some legs still in the second half of the year. And we think, uh, you know, some of those come straight from the tech sector, but just better valuations and, and more robust cash flows in particular. Danielle, every, <clears throat> everybody is trying to figure out... Um if we're out of the woods at this point. You've been watching some of the technical issues pretty closely. What do you think? So, you know, for me, it is all going to depend on earnings because when we're going into this week, we have so many companies coming up. We've got AMD that's going to be critical for the semiconductors. We also have Google and Amazon. When you're looking at Google and Amazon in particular, they are going to have a massive impact on the NASDAQ. And the fact of the matter is, is that both of them have about a $100, $120 expected move. If either one of those companies do anything that disappoints investors, they could easily break those January lows, bringing the NASDAQ lower. So as of right now, I'm looking at the markets as having stabilized. And yes, we are holding those January lows. Uh, but those reports are very critical. And if those fall more than expected, they could easily break that support and bring the NASDAQ lower.